So microdosing psychedelic mushrooms, it's getting a lot of attention lately and often for good reason. You know, microdosing with psilocybin mushrooms can help with mental health issues like depression and anxiety. Um, it can often enhance your overall well-being and can even help with creativity and flow states. So in today's video, we're gonna give you just a basic overview of how to microdose mushrooms by walking through six easy to follow steps so that way you feel totally prepared to embark on your microdosing journey. However, before we get started, just take a second and subscribe to Third Wave's YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all of the educational content that we have coming out. So step one in microdosing psilocybin mushrooms is to prepare your microdose. There's fresh mushrooms, there's dried mushrooms, and there's truffles. For dried cubensis, the general dose range is 0.1 to 0.3 grams. This is double for truffles if you're getting this from the Netherlands. And you may need a certain type of scale for accurate dosing because you have a few options if you wanna work with uh, the mushroom in this way. One, you can eat the mushroom. Two, you can make tea. And three, you can make capsules. My personal recommendation is to make capsules. They're easy, they're reliable. You can weave in a consistent dosage to really understand how it's affecting you. And if you do you know, wanna go that route, make sure you check out this video for more detailed information on preparing your mushrooms for microdosing. It's called How to Prepare Psilocybin Mushrooms for Microdosing. And it actually comes from our old microdosing course. So it's phenomenal material for you to dive into. Step two is you need to calibrate your dose. Everyone's dose level is different. For some people, 100 milligrams will be a microdose. For other people, 500 milligrams will be a microdose. So it's important that you start low and go slow. You wanna find your sweet spot for your unique constitution. Uh, and so if you start at 0.1, then you can go to 0.2, then you can go to 0.3, then you can go to 0.4, right? You're looking for a range of dose levels. And if you feel it a little bit, that's okay, right? Microdosing is typically sub-perceptible, but if you do what we call a mini dose, see how that feels as well, because a lot of this experimentation, this trial and error, is just to help you become more skilled at how you're working with these different dose levels. Step three is to plan your microdosing protocol, because microdosing is about going from day one to day 30. It's not just the single day itself. So keep in mind that there's short-term tolerance buildup with psilocybin, about 48 hours. Uh, so you'll only wanna microdose two, maybe three times a week. Make sure you always have a day off in between those microdosing schedules. And then intuitively pay attention to what's coming up for you. And if you want a video on microdosing protocols, we also have a video that we can point you to here. Step four is to curate your set and setting, both the internal and the external. So before you start your microdose, Make sure that you're in a good environment. Make sure that your mindset is really clear. Make sure that you have certain things in your external environment, that you're in an, an apartment or in a park that you feel comfortable and safe in. And then finally, that's step five, take the microdose, enjoy the ride. Continue to cultivate presence. You know, look to engage your body in different somatic you know, activities. You might go hiking, you might go biking, you might try yoga, you might do some meditation, you could do some breath work, you could do some jujitsu or some movement, right? There's a lot of different things that you can weave in. Uh, and in fact, we have a full video dedicated to that uh, called The Ideal Day to Get the Most Out of Microdosing, where we've outlined how you could set up an ideal day for your microdosing protocol. And finally, step six, reflection and integration. Uh, you know, integration is 80% of uh, these experiences with psychedelic mushrooms. It's important that you spend a little bit of time at the end of each day to reflect on your microdosing experience, to journal on it. How did you feel? What did you notice? What type of emotions came up as you were moving through the day? Cultivating awareness about how it affects you will help you to further develop this skill of psychedelics. And leveraging that skill of psychedelics is what's gonna help lead to further growth and transformation. So these are the six basic steps for microdosing mushrooms. If you want a deeper dive into microdosing, make sure to check out Third Wave's microdosing course. It will show you how to specifically tailor your microdosing to your needs, to your unique goals, while minimizing some of the inherent risks that come with this cutting edge technique. 
Our course also includes science-based integration practices that you can weave in to your everyday experience and also some other fun experiments to try on your own when it comes to microdosing. However, if you just want to grow your own mushrooms, if you already feel like you're a microdosing master, but you wanna have uh, access to more medicine, our mushroom grow kit is a fast and simple way to cultivate your own medicine. So thanks for watching this video on the six basic steps to start microdosing with psilocybin mushrooms and best of luck as you embark on this next journey. Thanks so much for watching. For a deeper dive into the power of microdosing with complimentary practice and extra guidance, check out our best-selling microdosing course. It's a science-based protocol with dozens of best practices so you can customize your protocol to your unique needs and goals. Check out the link in the description below.